Well, John Blacksland, the fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine seems to be running in all directions. Now we have the US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan warning that there would be consequences for China and that he's told Beijing this in very blunt terms in a face-to-face -face meeting. If they try to circumvent sanctions, make life economically easier for the Russians. Uh, how significant a threat is this from Washington? Uh, look, it's a significant one, Greg. Thank you for having me on. It's very interesting to see how President Xi's rhetoric has shifted from no limits only a few weeks ago to now maximum restraint and looking to avoid conflict. It's very interesting also to see how US intelligence has been played as a diplomatic tool on the world stage by effectively outing the initiatives from Moscow to reach out for additional supplies. Clearly, and there's a number of indicators now emerging that things are going so gravely badly for Russia that they're running short of supplies, ammunition, stockpiles of weapons and equipment that they're calling on China, which obviously has very similar compatible equipment and, and weapons supplies to supplement them. Now, the here, it's very interesting. This meeting that's just happened in Rome is a, is a particularly consequential one, I think, because this is an opportunity behind closed doors for China and the United States to actually explore, is there a way out of here? Mm. And I think that's really worth exploring. Yeah, so let's do just that. What is it that could work. I, I've heard analysis that says this is just the sort of interaction that the Chinese value and like to work with. They don't like, you know, megaphone diplomacy from the White House, but fairly tightly held, fairly confidential. There hasn't been much that's leaked from it. Does this lead you to believe that some common ground could be fine, some red lines drawn, if you want to use that metaphor, between America and Beijing? So, yes, I think that may be the case. What we're witnessing, it appears, is a considerable degree of nervousness in China about where Putin has taken things. Uh, this was supposed to be a quick decapitation of the government in Kiev that clearly has gone completely pear-shaped. And now the blowback is starting to affect China. The threats that uh, we know that Americans have been talking about in terms of possibly imposing sanctions on Chinese companies that are dependent in, in the global supply chain on componentry from the United States and input from the United States. This has got not only that kind of transactional ramifications, but it's got reputational ramifications as well. And the consolidation of resolve in the NATO sphere must be seriously affecting President Xi's calculus about the interests now of remaining Vladimir Putin's closest buddy. And do, uh, what does this tell him about, yeah, this cohesion that you're talking about, John, does it tell him that if the US were to press go on a range of sanctions directed against Chinese business enterprises, that uh, it wouldn't be the US alone, it would in fact find unity through Europe and goodness knows where else, Japan, Australia and the rest of it? Yeah, well, this is the thing. It's so shocking, the level of resolve internationally in support of Ukraine. This is catching everybody flat-footed. Nobody anticipated the level of uh, backbone, if you like, internationally. We're seeing it with the newly elected president of South Korea. Uh, in the, the Japanese have been announcing similar sorts of things about resolve, even just the last few days about talking about even the talk of... Uh, uh, of southern Japan uh, being used, Okinawa being used uh, for defensive measures against Chinese aggression in Taiwan. This is language that was unheard of before. So my sense is that, uh, that President Xi is probably weighing up, you know, hey, this was supposed to be a good deal. If he had won clean, clearly and cleanly, it probably would have, particularly if, uh, if Europe had been able to be kept divided. And let's forget, let's not forget, only a month ago, you know, we had different point of view from Olaf Scholz, from uh, Emmanuel Macron and Boris Johnson and Joe Biden. They're all saying different things now, much more in lockstep. Mm. And that's got to be sending a shiver down the spine in, G, in President G, G's mind, because this is not what China wants. China wants for its position to be strengthened. It needs to have these people divided 
and not resolve, not resolute. More like Afghanistan, August last year, than uh, than February 2022 in Ukraine. So the question now is, well, what does what does President Xi do? Does he supply arms or does he spurn? Uh, Putin and reject his off his request. And in this sense, you reckon what the hand of well, Joe Biden and his reputation for handling crises like this is actually being enhanced, do you? I know plenty of people have taken to their keyboards to write how the US has been greatly weakened, it miscalculated, it didn't understand Putin's motives. You seem to be saying, what are we, three weeks in, that, that three hmm. weeks in... Uh, the White House and Biden are in a better negotiating position? Much stronger negotiating position. The fact that this meeting is happening in Rome was pre-planned, -pre we know that, but the agenda is now one about what can China get out of this safely? How can China rescue itself from this predicament it's found itself in? By, by doubling down on its relationship with Putin uh, it, at the time of the Winter Olympics, uh, it, it's left itself overexposed. And clearly, you know, with South Korea and Japan and Taiwan and Australia and others in our end of the Eurasian landmass, strongly siding with the NATO, United States and, and Ukraine, this is this has got to be, you know, sending signals that they've got to recalibrate, recalculate. And here's the thing. What, what we haven't been giving much thought to is the prospect of China flipping, of China actually saying, you know what, uh, our, our interests are actually economically much closer with the West. Russia is, you know, relatively speaking, economically speaking, it's a minnow and right. it has become a pariah. That and would be a monumental be a shift in position uh, and it would almost reverse the whole China story that we've been telling for the last four or five years. Realistic, do you think? Well, who knows? I mean, you know, Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon went, went to, to Peking, as we called it back then, uh, just after Gough Whitlam had gone, um, Gough Whitlam got excoriated by then Prime Minister Billy McMahon for being a traitor days before Henry Kissinger went to do the same thing. And of course, great power contestation, great power politics on the Eurasian landmass. You've got you've got Russia, you've got China, you've got Europe, and you've got our extra territorially. You've got the United States of America and allies beyond that. This is this is a, you know. It's not Game of Thrones, but I tell you what, it's Game of Empires. And this is, a blood, uh, I, my sense is Putin, uh, Putin is feeling cornered, feeling more vulnerable than ever. And President Xi's got more chips up his hand, uh, up his sleeve, if you like. I'm mixing my metaphors here. Fair enough. Um, but, but, you know, Xi is actually now in a delicate position himself. How much he's got to weigh up the consequences of... of uh, further alienating the other markets. All of these other countries are much bigger economic partners to China than Russia is. Mm. So does Russia matter more militarily or does the West matter more because of its economic heft? Yeah, whichever. Here, Sorry, go on. So this is a really point. significant turnaround. It's a really significant inflection point. And, of course, the days and the days ahead will be, be able to confirm which way he goes. and Whether that uh, intelligence revelation of this you know, discussion between the Russians and the, and the Chinese has actually blown his cover and forced Xi's hand. It's yep. interesting well, the, time. The, it certainly is. And the only conclusion I suppose we can draw with any certainty at the moment is that wars never quite go to plan. And that's certainly true of this one. John Blackson, once again, thank you for your expert analysis. We'll catch up again soon. Thank you, Greg.